Why buy a book again when you can just rent them? Today we're talking about ebook subscription services. Are they worth it? Welcome to Geek vs. Geek, where Dave Johnson and Rick Broida fight it out over all things tech. I'm your host, Helen Hong. Ebook subscription services let you read as many books as you like for a fixed monthly fee, but are they worth it? They are. For some. <laughs> I need to qualify it with that. So, for those who are not familiar with them, ebook subscription services are kind of like Netflix for ebooks. Mm -hmm. So, you pay a flat monthly rate and you get unlimited access to whatever library of books that a particular service offers. So if you're an avid reader and you, you know, plow through a book a week or something like that, the math really makes sense because these are mostly ten, nine, eight bucks a month for the service and you just couldn't buy the books for that same amount of money. So for some readers, these are definitely a cool deal. Not for some readers, but for very, very, very few. Like the kind of select audience that this is for are people that got in a car accident and dragged themselves to a nearby hut in the woods and they can't get out and they're just trapped there with their iPad. It's like misery. You yes, can't exactly. It's a misery for turn. Anyone with this. that's in misery, this might be good for. <laughs> or someone who's retired and just sits around all day long reading. Because honestly, Helen, how many books do you read in a month? Uh, not very many. Like maybe a quarter of a book yeah, in a month? Yeah, I'm a very slow reader. So yeah, actually, that's probably about accurate. It takes accurate. me at least a month to get through a book. Yeah. And it's not not that I read at the third grade level, which I do, um, <laughs> or it's just I have very little time to read, so I read at bedtime for a little bit. I don't think that's unusual. I think a lot of people are like that. So if I were spending money on a subscription service, it would be a massive waste of money for me because I wouldn't even get through one book in a month, much less chew through five books <laughs> to make it worth my while. We should mention which what these services are. Yeah. So there's, there's three kind of big ones right now, Entitle, Oyster, and scribed. Two of them are kind of this all you can eat model, whereas one of them, I think it's entitled, your eight or nine bucks a month gets you two ebooks to keep. So it, it's basically working out to five bucks per book per month. If, if these are books that you were going to buy on Amazon anyway and they each cost eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars, the math makes sense. Yeah. The, you know. the problem is, is that books are a fundamentally different kind of thing. You know, a subscription service like music or movies, you know, things like that where you can consume multiple ones in a day mm -hmm. or in a week, that's great. Books just don't work that way. Well, if you subscribe, do you have to be subscribed for a, like a minimum amount of time? Like, do you have to be subscribed for a year or six months or something? No, it's just it's, you pay by the month. Can okay. you just subscribe for a month? You could just subscribe. So maybe for a month, if so... you're like a summertime reader, like if you're one of those people that goes on yeah. a vacation and you can plow through five books, that might be good for that one month. That's a great point. Or after you drag yourself into that cabin in the woods, <laughs> just for that time until someone blizzard. comes and rescues you. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rick thinks the subscription services are worth it. Dave thinks not so much, especially if you're a slow reader like all of us are. Let us know what you think on Facebook, Twitter, or email, and we will see you next time on Geek vs. Geek.